Dr. Gregory Ellison um, from Candler School of Theology and uh, Ms. Georgette Legister um, from Emory University. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so delighted to have you here with us lecturing in our three-year series um, themed Why Youth Ministry, A Beacon of Joy in the Midst of Adversity. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just uh, wondering, how do you define joy? What is joy mm -hmm. to you? Well, uh, JoJo and I have been uh, really grateful for the hospitality, first of all, uh, that you and the staff here at uh, the Yale Center for Faith and Culture have extended unto us uh, to not only um, share with uh, the individuals who will be in the session this evening, but uh, also to take part in the development of curriculum mm -hmm. and um, the, the chapter that we will get a chance to work together mm -hmm. on. Um, this is my second time back mm -hmm. to uh, YDS, uh, and we could you know, speak more about that. Um, but JoJo and I are colleagues in an organization uh, that I started back in 2013 called Fearless Dialogues. Mm -hmm. And um, so an opportunity for us to think about joy mm -hmm. and its relationship to fear is uh, very healthy for us at this stage in our organization's development. So we've been kind of tossing around some ideas mm -hmm. about about how we think about joy, and I, I have to write them down because I haven't committed them <laughs> to memory, but from the the way that we've been talking about talking about it, joy is a creative and disruptive encounter. Mm -hmm. I think it would. Uh, I think we we've read about how joy is not necessarily a feeling or emotion, but you know we work in creating spaces, mm -hmm. and so uh, we we see mm -hmm. joy as a creative and disruptive encounter that disrupts hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Uh, it bolsters fearlessness, mm -hmm. and we can talk about what lessness and fear mean for us. And it reconnects humanity to four fundamental human needs that uh, we believe that structure uh, our interactions with others and how we conceive of self. And so um, a, a bit about that, that definition. So. Why we, we think about joy as a creative and disruptive encounter is because once you bump into uh, to joy, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, through a relationship, an epiphany, mm -hmm. it alters your existence. You don't mm -hmm. move in the world the same way. You don't think in the same way. It reorients your path. It may reorient your vocation or how you engage with other people. But it also reinvigorates, mm -hmm. you know, how you think about yourself and others. So in this creative encounter, it, it alters how uh, not only you think, but you interact with, uh, with other people. It's also disruptive mm -hmm. because um, once you uh, encounter this experience, once you engage in uh, this joyful moment, right, you can't do things the way that you once did them mm -hmm. because you've seen something slightly differently. Mm -hmm. You've heard something slightly differently. Mm -hmm. You've, you've uh, interacted with mm -hmm. someone or the world around you in a slightly different way. But um, in this encounter, you know, it's, it's almost like you enter into this uh, sphere that changes the self. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are three components that we think uh, are going on. The first is it disrupts hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, have been formed by the work of one of my professors, Donald Capps, uh, God rest his soul, uh, who wrote in Agents of Hope that there are three primary threats to hope. Mm -hmm. the, the first is despair, uh, which I saw Dr. Willie Jennings talking about, mm -hmm. that joy is a response to despair. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The, the second, and despair is a feeling that your future is blocked. Mm -hmm. the, the second is apathy, mm -hmm. right? Um, a, a sense of lethargy or a lack of energy to pursue uh, goals and future aspirations. And the third is shame, mm -hmm. right? And so in some regard, when we uh, bump up against joy, Right, mm -hmm. uh, those uh, debilitating elements mm -hmm. of hopelessness begin to shed away. Um, but uh, joy also 
bolsters fearlessness. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let Jojo uh, kind of unpack what fearlessness is. But, uh, and, and finally, uh, it, it reconnects us to our four fundamental human needs. And mm-hmm. these f- fundamental human needs are um, described by a social psychologist by the name of Kipling Williams, mm-hmm. who says that every uh, human being has first an innate need to belong, mm-hmm. to be some part of community. Uh, secondly, the, the human beings who, uh, he, he writes about ostracism and people who aren't given the opportunity to be seen and heard fully. So when you're, when you're not seen and heard, right, mm-hmm. there's a feeling that I might not belong in this group of people, mm-hmm. right? But secondly, there is a lack of control. I cannot control how you choose to see me or not see me. Mm -hmm. And when that sense of agency is taken away, something also dies, right? Mm -hmm. And then the the third fundamental human need is self-esteem. There's this internal questioning that happens when you are kind of removed from community and you're ostracized. And then the fourth is a sense of meaningful existence. Mm -hmm. If I were to die today with anybody, notice. Mm -hmm. So uh, joy, when we encounter joy, it has a way of reconnecting us to those fundamental human needs that might have been compromised, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, When I encounter joy, my sense of belonging may be altered. Mm -hmm. When when I have this moment of rejoicing, right, my, my sense of control of my own future and my destiny and my hopes and dreams may be shifted. Right. When, when I bump up against joy, right, those questions that are kind of debasing my sense of self and my self-esteem may begin to dissipate some. Right. And then finally, you know, my meaningful existence, what you all talk about, human flourishing, right? right? Mm-hmm. How we conceive of the good life, right? right? Mm-hmm. We, we begin to rearticulate and reformulate and reimagine what life looks like that is one that is lived with meaning. Mm-hmm. And so I think in this way that we, and we could talk about this, I'd love if we could, um, in, in the work of fearless dialogues, we, we, we have not articulated in this way, but we seek to create these unique spaces where people can bump into moments of joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, mm-hmm. um, I, I think that might get us started, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, I think if I could add to that, um, right now the way Miroslav Volf defines joy, the, his tripartite definition mm-hmm. of the element of joy being, you know, the, there has to be an aspect of agency mm-hmm. and that joy is circumstantial mm-hmm. and affective. Mm-hmm. You know, these are the three kind of components of joy our definition of joy certainly uh, responds to those three elements, but I think mm-hmm. pushes it a little bit further mm-hmm. because of the context in which we do our work. Mm-hmm. So in Fearless Dialogues, the communities that we work with, some of these communities, I mean, we've worked in gang-ridden communities. I understand. My research <laughs> is with former Mai Mai combatants. The Mai Mai are considered to be a militia, an insurgency in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And so these young people um, whose adolescence and youth is stripped from them because of the circumstances in which they're in, you know, defining joy and looking for circumstantial connections or um, aspects of joy, it's really problematic in our work. It's difficult for us to do that Mm -hmm. because we're not entering to these communities to change that community. Right. We're engaging in work in those communities, knowing full well that, you know, systemic change takes a long time. So by defining joy as, you know, the creation of space in which there's disruption, Mm -hmm. then it allows for us to disrupt the circumstance, although we may not have power to change it in that 90 minutes, in that four-time encounter in a one-week week long workshop, if that makes sense. So it's really important for us to um, really speak to circumstances that as youth workers, we may not be able to change immediately. But how do you define joy? How do you um, invite young people to joy when they have to go back to their normal world, which is not our normal world? Can can I jump in? (laughs) (laughs) 
can I can I jump in? Go ahead. Okay. I, I know I know you all have us on the time clock, but hey, this conversation's heating up. So like, um, uh, Sarah, the when when I I think about what JoJo's talking about and entering in these spaces where despair often hovers, yeah. right? There there needs to be a disruptive element, right? right. And I, I'm. I, I'm thinking of the work of Brian Blunt, who has been mm -hmm. very formative in, in my work, and he talks about these pockets of resistance. Mm -hmm. And a pocket of resistance is basically when uh, human interaction meets divine intervention. Mm. And it reformulates uh, how people conceive of time, narrative, and space, mm -hmm. right? So there is this, uh, he, he refers to it as, this, it's like an inbreaking of the spirit mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. and this this, the sphere in which despair and apathy and shame existed, mm -hmm. such that people begin to envision not only their past stories, right, but their present and their future in different ways because there is this timeless moment mm -hmm. that has been created. And in that moment, even if only for a moment of a, a, a matter of seconds, they can glimpse joy, mm -hmm. it provides a very subtle yet meaningful and powerful transformative mm -hmm. element of joy yeah right that i can see something slightly different in the midst of the chaos in which i live yeah that's good and if we could create just those small intermittent pockets of resistance yeah. in uh, atmospheres in that are perceived as joyless mm -hmm. with people who the average person might look at and say, oh, there's no joy in their life. Right. If you could, you know, illuminate it, you know, mm -hmm. just for one second with a question or mm -hmm. an exercise mm -hmm. or uh, a theory, mm -hmm. right, or some uh, piece of artwork mm -hmm. that would titillate the imagination, mm -hmm. right, maybe they could move in their world in a slightly different way. Right. That, that creative encounter really becomes disruptive.